top NASCAR prospect Carson Hosevar finally announces his 2024 plans. Now the pressure's on. Good morning. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Last night, we finally got confirmation on one of NASCAR Silly Season's biggest stories. We will react in just a few moments. First, real quick, tonight at 8 p.m., I'll be hosting a live stream right here on this channel. Some of my YouTube friends will be there as well. You can click the top link down below, set a reminder. Hope to see you there. Should be a fun hangout. Putting the free agent fodder on pause for just one more moment, there was some other NASCAR news yesterday. Matt Weaver, again reporting, writing for Sportsnot, says NASCAR has scheduled a Phoenix Raceway test for just after this season. Again, the focus will be improving the short oval racing product. It's unclear at this time specifically what NASCAR is planning to test. But what haven't they tried at this point? They've added a diffuser. They've taken pieces off the diffuser. They've tested with no diffuser, no underwing. They've tested a reverse splitter. They've tested big rear spoilers and short rear spoilers. They're running out of variables, at least on the arrow side. I hope whatever this test is, it's more than just an arrow test. I hope Goodyear can bring a radically different tire, something to compensate for how much wider the tires on the next gen are, something that will take away grip on short ovals. Is that a groove tire? Is that something else? I'm not smart enough to answer that. Under the hood, I doubt NASCAR is going to bump up the horsepower significantly, despite drivers and fans clamoring for it. Remember Christopher Bell on this show called these engines gutless at short tracks. Everything that we do to these race cars is somewhat of a band-aid for one problem, and that's the horsepower problem. The lower horsepower is a cost-saving measure. Less wear and tear on the current engines allows them to be reused. You know, the teams have previously said they're not saving much money with this rule change, but they also haven't really been outspoken in favor of higher horsepower. And NASCAR still seems to believe that these slightly lower horsepower numbers are attractive to outside manufacturers. So solely from a business standpoint, it does seem unlikely the horsepower numbers will change, but man, you can pull all the aerodynamic levers you want, and you should. It is good that NASCAR continues to try those things, but if you want real change at these short tracks, you gotta look at the tires, and you gotta look at the engines. Or at the very least, get rid of shifting at short tracks, however that's possible. Glad that NASCAR is continuing to test this style of racing. They need to get it right. They should be able to get this right. Short tracks, historically, NASCAR's bread and butter. I hope they figure it out. Hopefully this Phoenix test ends up being productive. Now let's get to Carson Hosevar, one of the most talked about NASCAR prospects in recent memory. He's burst onto the scene this year. You want to talk about a breakout season between his three wins in trucks? He's still in contention for the championship. His super sub performances for both Spire and Legacy Motor Club on the Cup Series side, Carson Hosevar's brand has done a complete 180 in less than a year. A year ago, he was that tall, kind of awkward kid who makes a lot of bad decisions in trucks. Now, all anyone can rave about is his raw speed, his potential. He's gone from being almost the black sheep of the garage to now potentially a number one overall draft pick in less than a year. It blows my mind, honestly, but I'm happy for Carson Hosevar. Yesterday, he officially announced that he has signed a multi-year contract with Spire Motorsports to drive their number 77 Cup Series car beginning in 2024. I found this detail to be very interesting and kind of inspiring, honestly. While on NASCAR Race Hub last night, Carson Hosevar said that talks between him and Spire really began after that standout performance at Gateway. Remember when LaJoy went and drove the 9 for Hendrick? Spire needed someone in the seven. They called up 20-year-old Carson Hosevar, and he ran inside the top 20, top 15 before you know, his brakes blew. Opportunities come and go in life, and every opportunity is different. I think all any of us ever ask for is to have a shot and to have that shot mean something. If you get that shot and succeed and do well, you want that to translate into you know a career move, a career jump, a better opportunity. You want that opportunity to matter. That substitution role at Gateway, I don't think any of us made too much of it. 
at that time, I think Josevar had maybe just won his first truck race, and it was that race at Texas. It was a little weird, a little fluky. Even then, I'm not sure we were really ready to say this guy is, you know, for sure a candidate for cup next year. I think we were looking at Xfinity at, at best. But he showed up at Gateway with no prior on-track cup series experience and ran top 15, top 16 against the big dogs. And I don't know, it's inspiring to know that Spire saw that performance and immediately said, hey, maybe this is our guy. It translated into what's now Carson Hosevar's best career opportunity yet. Now it is worth mentioning, Carson Hosevar is very familiar with the next gen. He's been driving a simulator for, I think, Trackhouse for at least all of this year, maybe even some of last year. So he's been around. He has been on teams' radars, but now Spire has him locked up for multiple years. He's replacing Ty Dillon for what it's worth. Ty Dillon released a statement of his own. I'm grateful to Jeff, TJ, and everyone at Spire Motorsports for allowing me to drive the number 77 this season. I wish their organization nothing but the best in the future. I'm excited for what's to come next year. I saw a statement as well from Spire co-owner Jeff Dickerson thanking Ty Dillon for his time with the team. And in his statement, he also said, you know, quote, hey, and we know you'll land with a top flight race team which yeah, you know, maybe is just him you know, complimenting Ty, saying something nice, but maybe he's also teasing a, another upcoming silly season deal that we don't know about yet. You know, Ty Dillon has in the past been linked to colleague racing. I'm not sure exactly how legitimate those rumors are, but okay, I'm so sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're not talking about Ty Dillon today. We're finally talking about Carson Hosevar. Let's get back on track. It's crazy because the first time Carson Hosevar ever popped up on my radar was just four years ago, I believe, 2019 Eldora. Carson Hosevar, 16 years old, is on the entry list driving for Jordan Anderson Racing. It's incredible how far his career has come in such a short amount of time. And I respect Carson Hosevar for leaning into his dirt roots, released this really awesome t-shirt design yesterday, a play on the classic Dirt to Daytona video game. Oh, man. I got to fire up my, my Play Spire 24, you know, get my memory cards back out, see if this thing will run. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, that's an awesome design. Uh, but let's focus here. Is this the right move for Carson Hosevar? Is this the right move for Spire right here, right now? For what it's worth, Spire co-owner Jeff Dickerson said this about Carson Hosevar, quote, Carson is a proven winner and excels with every opportunity. He's an undeniable talent and reminds me a lot of a young Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. We're thrilled to have him join the Spire Motorsports family and help us continue to raise our competitive bar. Ooh, how about those comps? A couple of Cup Series champions, future likely first ballot Hall of Famers. Ooh, I think the timing of this announcement is perfect for both sides. We're still in the early years of this new next-gen era with a radically different car that drives so much differently than its predecessor, drives much differently than the current Xfinity or truck vehicles. If you're a young driver with Cup Series potential, teams want to get you into Cup as soon as they can so you can begin learning this new car so you don't fall behind. In just this coming season, we'll see both Zane Smith and Carson Hosevar effectively bypass the Xfinity series to jump straight into Cup. And honestly, I think that's the right thing to do. Maybe this isn't cool to say, but I think you are limited now to what you can learn driving a truck or Xfinity series car. Any seat time is good seat time, but seat time in the next gen, way more important right now than seat time in those other two series. Spire Motorsports is finally ready to go for it. They're building an empire. They just bought Kyle Busch Motorsports. They're building their own pipeline now, trucks to cup. Gamebridge has come in, injected so much cash into this operation. I expect these cars to improve, get better. And now they have a solid young driver lineup next year. Corey LaJoy is the veteran. <laughs> Corey LaJoy is your stable, constant. Zane Smith is kind of your unknown because he's technically a track house driver. We'll be getting track house support, but things you learn from track house for his car, I'm sure will translate to the other two cars. So, you know, Zane may be a rental, but still a good guy to have. Now you got Carson Hosevar, a young driver with a ton of potential, someone you can build around, someone you can water and watch grow. Someone who also, quite honestly, is going to put pressure on Corey LaJoy. Pressure that Corey LaJoy has really never felt from a teammate before. I think that's a good thing. I, I think it's time we find out for sure what Corey LaJoy can really do. Where does he stack up to some of these other young drivers that are 
moving up in the system behind him. I'm excited for Spire and for Carson Hosevar. Look, there will be growing pains. He's only 20 years old. Spire Motorsports has really never been consistently competitive with Gamebridge involved now. There's hope that next year they will take a competitive step forward. But you know, even this year, the 77 car that Hosevar is you know, theoretically stepping into has been terrible, has been awful among the worst in the Cup Series. <laughs> it won't be that bad next year. I'm betting on that. But this team and this driver, Carson Hosevar, will be challenged at times next year. You know, Hosevar has the raw speed. I don't think anybody's doubting that. He knows how to take a car, drive it to the edge, sometimes step over the edge, but make it go fast. I said this yesterday, but it's going to be his race craft, his patience, his consistency, his ability to not make bad decisions in the moment. That's what will be tested. These are all the same questions, though, we had about Ty Gibbs coming into this year. And not to pivot too hard here, but Ty Gibbs has impressed the heck out of me this season. You look at the stat sheet, he's steadily improving getting better, knocking on the door. I think of that first win. He just missed out on the playoffs, pointing his way in as a rookie. And what was the concern coming into this year? Maturity. Can Ty Gibbs keep his emotions in check? Can he avoid, you know, driving through other people, pissing off veterans, making enemies right off the bat? And I mean, unless I'm forgetting something outside of maybe the all-star open, which, you know, it's an exhibition race, his little back and forth with McDowell. I don't think Ty Gibbs has made any enemies this year. I think, if anything, he's earned quite a bit of respect from many of his peers. Ty Gibbs is proof that you can throw a a 20-year-old to the Wolves in the NASCAR Cup Series, and they can come out a better race car driver for it. Not to put too much extra pressure on Carson Hosevar next year, Spire is not Joe Gibbs Racing, but I expect to see many of the same improvements from Carson next year as well. Uh, I think the goal next year should be to earn the respect of his peers, race hard, but race fair. Take the small victories when they're handed to you. You're not going to go out there and win or contend for top fives off the bat. If you have a 15th place car, finish 15th. That should be the goal off the bat. And then lastly, show improvement. Get better throughout the year. You might start the year running 25th. By summer, maybe you're running top 20. Maybe by the end of the year, you're in the top 15, top 10 from time to time. We've seen a glimpse of what Carson Hosevar can do with Legacy Motor Club this year in a substitution role. I'm excited. I think Spire Motorsports got a great young driver. Not going to light the world on fire off the bat, but give him a couple of years. If Spire continues to improve their equipment, their performance, Carson Hosevar could be a real force to be reckoned with sooner rather than later. Like I said, number one overall draft pick. This franchise just got their centerpiece. Hopefully they can build around him. He develops to their liking. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section below. Do you like this move for Spire? Do you think Carson Hosevar is moving up to the Cup Series at the right time? Should he have done a full year in Xfinity? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below, but that's going to do it. Leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR every single day. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your generous support of the show. Again, tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be live right here on this channel. Hope you're able to stop by, say howdy. Uh, But that's going to do it for this episode. I'll catch you in the next one later this week. Have a good one, y'all.